Welcome everyone to Team Essentially Healed, our uh, product education, health education. I'm Joni Zander, I'm your team leader. And tonight is a follow-up from the last couple of nights uh, or the last couple of trainings that I've done. Tonight, we're gonna to be talking about designing your life. Now, what we've been talking about is stress and reducing stress and what it does to your body and, and all of that. And I really believe that designing your life is one of the best things that you can do to, uh, to reduce or even eliminate stress. I'm going to start off with just a list of things and just feel in your body how these feel. These are just words. They don't have their own power. Uh, laundry, shopping, cooking, dishes, commuting, mortgage, insurance, and work. What are your reactions like in your body to the items on that list? So do those words that I just listed, do they feel like have to's? Do some of them feel like a life sentence? Do some of them feel like drudgery? What if I told you that the first step to designing your life is to change your perception of the things that you have to do? So back when my girls were little, I learned about a crazy idea called radical unschooling. I'm not gonna go into the unschooling part here, and if that's something that you wanna learn more about, just let me know privately, and I'd be happy to, to explain that to you. What I wanna share about is the radical living part. What I learned from this educational and life philosophy is that we always have the choice to change how we feel about something, and we always have the choice to live differently. I eliminated have to from my internal and external voc vocabulary. And I don't know, some of you know me better than others. I don't know if you've ever noticed that. Uh, and here's how that works for me. So I focus on the thing that I want, say clean clothes. I get to do laundry because I enjoy having clean clothes. Same with making my bed. I feel like it's a form of self-love to make my bed in the morning because I really enjoy getting into a nicely made bed at night. So what about shopping? So I know I'm weird in this. I've always loved shopping for groceries. I also know that a lot of people don't enjoy that. So a reframing of that is, do you enjoy having fresh ingredients? Or maybe you could get to where you enjoy the process of picking out the best ingredients. Um, another idea would be maybe you could get to know one of the people who work at your local market and start to get to know them. Uh, my cousin actually has been doing this for a year or so now, just asking about their family or what they do outside of work, and then asking about maybe their weekend or what have you as a follow-up. And just every time he goes to the store, he seeks out that one employee that he's trying to get to know. Not only does that make your trip to the store more enjoyable, if you enjoy reaching out to people, but it makes their shift better as well. So it makes their job better. And everyone wants to be seen. And you know, people like grocery store clerks generally aren't people who people see, right? The people that you generally uh, ignore. So, um, so that's just a simple idea about making shopping easier or more enjoyable. What about cooking? So you can choose to love it, and you can choose to hate it. Uh, you can even choose to avoid it altogether, but that gets expensive and it's not as healthy. What can you do to choose to enjoy it for yourself? So if you're someone who doesn't enjoy cooking, what is it that you can do to enjoy it? Um, if you live alone, maybe invite a friend to come cook with you or even to just come eat with you. When my girls were little, I did a once a month cooking um, just on my own. And I loved getting so many meals prepped and into my freezer for days that I didn't have enough time. Um, and I know people who do cooperative once a month cooking where everyone makes one or two dishes but enough servings of it for the whole group, and then they get together and swap prepared meals. 
So just another just quick idea about how to make cooking maybe a little more enjoyable. I even know people who get together and do the once a month cooking together um, just to make it more fun. I've decided to enjoy cooking because I like having meals of real whole foods. I didn't always enjoy it, but it's something that contributes to my life. So I can love it or I can hate it, but I choose love. When I cook, I really like having a clean kitchen to start off in. So I decided to enjoy washing my dishes. And because water conservation is important to me, I usually do my dishes when I use them so it takes less water. Um, now there's a real key there in that um, the water conservation being important to me, part of designing your life is really looking at what your values are or what you value and aligning your life as much to your values as you possibly can. So I think you get the idea of the chore types of things, but what about financial stress? Um, that type of thing. So the mortgages, insurance, taxes, that sort of thing. Um, now people usually think about taxes as, oh, I have to do my taxes, but it's a choice, right? You can choose to do your taxes. You can choose not to do your taxes. There are consequences to that, you know, penalties or even jail, but it is a choice that you can make. So I choose to do my taxes on time because I don't like paying fines, right? So part of designing your life is knowing or even trusting that you don't have to. So for example, my youngest uh, decided to go to school in eighth grade. She mentioned to some of the other kids that she didn't have to be there. Um, she had gone from homeschooling to school and she truly didn't have to be there. And I pretty much told her that every chance I got. Um, the other kids told her that she was lying when in reality it was they who were misinformed. They were told by other people that they had to go to school, that they had to or they would be dumb, they had to or they wouldn't be able to get a good job when they grew up, um, they had to or their parents would get sent to jail. None of those statements are true as evidenced by the plethora of grown unschoolers in the world but these were statements that these kids had been told to get them to go to school every day. So when someone or society tells you that you have to do something, question it. Look at it. Is someone trying to control you? So in the case of these kids who were told that they had to go to school, yes, <laughs> adults were trying to control them to, because the parents had to work, so the kids needed to be in school. Um, the school would tell them that they had to be there because they, that's how they got their funding, right? So when society is telling you that you have to do something, are they profiting from your actions? So let's take a look at marketing real quick. Most marketing tries to manipulate you into buying something that you don't need or you don't even know was available. Uh, this is great when you have a need and it fills that need, like oils, but the majority of marketing actually makes us feel like we are less than if we don't buy X, Y, or Z, right? So it's that kind of keeping up with the Joneses. Um, our society, because we're in a capitalistic society, runs off of us continuing to want more and more and more. Society tells us that to be successful, you have to get married, buy a house, and have 2.5 kids. But what if that wasn't true? Or what if it isn't true for you? I did all of those things before I questioned anything. In my 30s, I asked, who has made all these decisions? I didn't remember making them. Not consciously anyway. I mean, yes, I made all those decisions, but I did so purely because society told me that that was the way. But by shifting to intentional living, I was able to really come to myself and come to what makes me happy. And when you focus on intentionality, um, so you're looking at what are my values? 
What do I value? What is going to make me happy? Um, a part of the unschooling that we did is actually allowing the kids to follow their bliss. And a lot of people assume that if you let kids do that, they're just going to do nothing. And that's, that can, there's nothing farther from the truth. Um, if kids aren't socialized into that whole thing of you have to do this and you have to you know, have somebody telling you what to do all the time, they're naturally curious. I mean, we all are naturally cur curious unless that is socialized out of us. And so what's going to make you happy is generally going to be best for society as well. So, um, so if you look at like philanthropy, um, I don't know about you guys, and I'm sure actually I do, that helping someone else makes you really happy, right? I mean, that is something that brings you a lot of joy. And so the more joy that you can bring into your life, the more you're designing your life. Last week, I asked you to just notice, right? To notice what you were doing and whether, whether what you were doing was by your choice or was it something that somebody else told you you should do? Did, was anybody able to do that exercise? Nope, okay. <laughs> I highly recommend it. It is really, really great. Um, another piece to that can be looking around your space and asking, and, and I'm sure you, have you guys heard of KonMari, the KonMari method, um, Marie Kondo, she's, a, her book is the, um, the Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. She's a, um, she's got a new Netflix series on tidying up. And um, people give her a lot of flack. Um, but what she does is she encourages people to take all of their possessions, not all at once. She starts with specific categories. Take those possessions and put them on your floor or on your bed or whatever, and just hold each item and ask, does this bring me joy? And to release the things that don't. And that's actually how I downsized to go into a van. I now live in less than 100 square feet. I couldn't be happier. I have everything that I need with me all the time. <laughs> and I don't have a lot of extraneous stuff that I'm taking care of, that I'm spending a lot of time with, that I have a lot of upkeep for. Um, I also know where everything I own is at all times. So I can actually find almost anything in my van in the dark because I have only the things that I need. So, so think about like if, you're, if you go into a room in your house and ask yourself, you know, when was the last time I used this? Does this item add to my life or am I giving my life to storing it or maintaining it? Um, so those are just some of the ideas that I have for designing your life. Um, so I'd love to open it up to just a discussion about, you know, what maybe some questions that you guys have or um, some pushback maybe, <laughs> um, or, you know, whatever your thoughts are on, on this and how it could possibly relate to stress. I have a question when you said, did we do that this week? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know we talked about meditating and I already do that. What was that homework? <laughs> the homework was to notice when you're doing anything that in the week, um, is that something that, that you decided that you wanted to do or was that something that society decided that you needed to do? Oh, now I'm remembering, thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm in a place in my life right now that, uh, well, I just created an LLC that's called Designing Life Intentionally. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, it'll it'll um, cover my life coaching and doTERRA and um, energy healing. Excellent. So I think I, I live like that every day. I try to purpose that way. Mm-hmm. So I imagine, Julie, that you have some additional tips. Has anything come to mind right away? 
Well, I love when you said, um, well, I have eliminated the I have to, I must, I need to. Those are all, um, those are all uh, controlled paradigms yes. statements. And uh, so I've eliminated I want to, I'd like to, I'm deciding to, yep. I'm deciding not to. Um, no, that's not for me right now. Things like that. Oh man, there's a whole different vibration and energy with that. There is absolutely. And another, um, so I've been working with a life coach since 2003. And one of the things that, um, I, that's actually something I would highly recommend is working with a life coach. Um, I would not be the person I am without having worked with her. Mm. And one of the things that we talk about is shoulding on yourself. Yes. O U L D I N G. So um, just when you put those shoulds on yourself, how does that feel? As opposed to, oh my gosh, I want to, right? Mm -hmm. the, and, you know, in Julie's uh, terminology, that vibration is so much higher when you are using the language. Language really does, language expresses ideas. Mm -hmm. And our subconscious really does listen to the language that we use. And so, so when you are more careful with the language that you're using, not in a, you know, really militaristic way, but just in an awareness, like be more aware of the language that you're using, especially with your self-talk and notice how those, you know, even like, um, okay. So for example, if you, if you catch yourself saying, oh, I should do blah, blah, blah stop and say, Oh, I get to, you, or I want to you, and see how that feels. See if it feels different. See if I'm, you know, if, if I'm all full of crap or not. <laughs> Another thing I watch very, very carefully is my, I am statements. Mm -hmm. um, because my subconscious is, takes high alert to what I say about like, you know, I could say I am tired. I am getting sick, I am this or whatever, uh, and I won't say those things. I can be tired, but I won't, I just don't need to speak it. Yeah. Um, because I am statements are very powerful. Janae, did you have something to add? Nope. Okay. I got the homework too. Okay. <laughs> I can say one more thing. You know how I got into doTERRA oils because of frequency, Joni, you know that big time. Yes. Because um, I heard a quantum physicist speak about frankincense at you know, a blind test and it was like, whoa, changed my world. So I continue to study frequency to this day. Mm -hmm. And they have found that a, that a grateful attitude with emotion, a, emotion and intent of gratitude is the same frequency as abundance. Mm -hmm. And your frequency. It, you'll you'll draw drugs. abundance. Yes. So so what what the key to that is is that if you're if you're tuning yourself to that frequency, you're going to attract more things at that frequency. Yes. Like, so, That's the entrainment principle that I taught in our yes. uh, beginning oil classes. Mm -hmm. And it can be at, at any level. It can be in low entrainment or high entrainment. It's yeah. really our choice. And as far as the oils go, that why we, that's why we don't make our own blends. We try to stick to the pro proprietary blends of doTERRA because they know the chemistry of the synergy of the blends. Mm -hmm. Whereas we can actually sabotage our blends hmm. energetically if we don't know what we're how we're blending them yeah although we do have people who are great at blends and the synergy and all of the chemistry of it and mm -hmm. and the frequencies of it like um desiree manga dog oh. for example her blends are amazing yeah 
but she also is very specific about them. Like do, you know, add them this, you know, add them in this order and mm -hmm. this amount. And yeah. so any more thoughts on designing your life and how that might reduce stress? One thing I, I want to say about this is that it should not increase your stress. <laughs> <laughs> So if the thought of designing your life is stressful, just apply one thing, maybe more gratitude, maybe just thinking, just reframing the have tos, just even just changing the language that you use around the have tos can change your whole life. 